here from Humble Bee and Me, and today we're making a lotion inspired by a lush favorite. Mine is called Oat Milk Dream Cream, and it's a lovely blend of oat milk with olive oil and cocoa butter that makes a fantastic, thick, creamy lotion that's wonderful for dry, sensitive skin. Like all lotions, this one is a blend of two parts, an oil part and a water part. So the oil part is our emulsifying wax, cocoa butter, and olive oil, while the water part is oat milk, vegetable glycerin, and silk. We'll measure these out, heat them through, and combine them. After that, we'll blend everything together with an immersion blender until we have a beautiful, thick, creamy lotion. We'll let it cool to more or less room temperature, and then we'll blend in our essential oils, which are totally optional, and our preservative, which is definitely not optional. And then that's it. You've got yourself a stunning lotion that is wonderful for sensitive, dehydrated skin. So come on, let's go make some lotion. Let's start by combining our oils. I've got a two cup heat resistant measuring cup there. We'll need 14 grams of cocoa butter, 22 grams of olive oil, and 14 grams of a complete emulsifying wax. So this one is emulsifying wax NF. And no, you really cannot use beeswax. It's got to be a complete emulsifying wax. You can also use polo wax, emulsimulse, or BTMS 50. In goes the cocoa butter. You can see that this is sort of the dregs of the cocoa butter. Uh, it's mostly cocoa dust. And our olive oil. Don't use really good beautiful salad olive oil for this. Pumice grade is totally fine. And then we'll get our water part together. So here I have 146 grams of water. And so it's relatively recently boiled, so it's reasonably clean. And then we're going to add four grams of vegetable glycerin. That's not my vegetable glycerin. This is my vegetable glycerin. Four grams of vegetable glycerin. And then because this is an oat milk dream clean, dream cream, we're going to need to add some oats. So this here is colloidal oatmeal. And uh, colloidal oatmeal is basically just oats that have been blitzed up and then sifted to remove anything insoluble so that the colloidal oatmeal is soluble in water. So we're going to add half a teaspoon of this. If you don't have colloidal oatmeal, there is a version of this recipe on my blog that uses just oats sort of steeped in the water to make a sort of tea-like oat milk. We'll add that. And set this aside. And then I'm gonna add some silk because I absolutely love silk in my lotion. So this here is silk peptides, but you can also use silk powder or silk amino acids. So I'm going to add 1 8th of a teaspoon using these cute little measuring spoons. Set that aside. Give this a stir. Looks like I'll need to get in there with a whisk to break up that oatmeal. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put both of these measuring cups in a saute pan here that I've put about an inch of water in. And I'm gonna take this over to my stove and I'm gonna put this over sort of low heat. And so what we're looking to do is get this water hot so that it's steaming and maybe you see some bubbles forming on the bottom of the pan, but we don't want it to start boiling. Otherwise we can start to bounce some water in here and we don't want that to happen. And so we're going to bring these to a sort of a, heat and hold. So we'll, we'll leave them on the stove with the steaming hot water bath for about half an hour, giving everything a chance to thoroughly melt over here. And the heat and hold will help kill any bacteria that might be hanging out in our water part. After 25 minutes on the stove, our oils have melted up and our water is steaming hot. And because these have been in the same water bath, we can guarantee that they are the same temperature, which is fantastic. So we can remove them from the water bath. Make sure you dry off the outside of the measuring cup so we don't incorporate any extra water. And you can set the pan aside. And 
and we'll just set them down on a dishcloth or some sort of a trivet so that the coolness of your counter doesn't cause your lotion to cool down too quickly. And now we will add the water part to the oil part. You can see this is immediately becoming nice and milky and uniform. We're going to get in here with an immersion blender now for some added blending power. I find that with the emulsifying waxes like Polo Wax or Emulsifying Wax NF, you want to have some extra firepower so that they thicken up quickly, otherwise it takes a couple days for them to become sort of a full lotiony texture. So you want to do quick bursts, otherwise the lotion will uh, sort of <laughs> jump the container. So this lotion is now fully emulsified, but you can see that it's still super, super liquidy. And if I touch it, whew, yep, it's still definitely very warm. So I'm gonna walk away for, from this for about 10 minutes to give it a chance to cool down a bit and then we'll come back and blend it a bit more and see where it's at. It's been about 10 minutes. I've given this a few stirs since then, but I have not blended it anymore. It's not really much more viscous. It does feel much cooler to the touch though. So let's give this a few more blitzes. As the lotion gets more viscous, you'll find that you can leave the immersion blender in and do longer blends without splattering lotion everywhere. All right, this is starting to thicken up now. I'm gonna keep blending. Once you're at the point where the lotion is thick enough that it can start supporting air bubbles and you'll start to see them on the blender when you pull it out, that's about when you should stop blending the lotion or you're just going to start blending in a bunch of air. So use your spatula to scrape off any excess lotion here. You can set that aside and give this a stir. Make sure you scrape up the sides and get down to the bottom. So that's still pretty warm. So I'm gonna leave this for another 10 minutes before we add our essential oils. Ten minutes later, we've got a beautiful thick lotion here. It's warm, but not hot, so we can add the rest of our ingredients. And also set this aside. We're definitely not going to be needing it anymore. For the essential oils, we'll be adding benzoin rose, or you can use rose geranium instead, it's much, much less expensive, chamomile, tea tree, and lavender. So I'll have 10 drops of benzoin. Benzoin is quite thick and a little bit blobby, so we'll sort of call it five blobs. It's not as potent as other essential oils, so don't worry too much if you end up getting a little too much. We're going to need four drops of Rose Absolute. Twelve drops of chamomile. This is Roman chamomile, but if you have South African chamomile, that's also really lovely. Four drops of tea tree. 
and seven drops of lavender. We'll give that a good stir. And last but not least, we'll add our preservative. So you need a broad spectrum preservative whenever you make anything that contains water. This is Liquid Germol Plus, uh, but I will put a link below so you can look at other preservatives that you might want to use instead and learn how much to add because it does vary depending on the preservative. But it's usually a fairly low percentage, somewhere from sort of 2% down. And blend that in. And now we're ready to put our lotion in our container. I've got this cute little jar with a mason top lid. Probably found this at Value Village, knowing me. So give that a whack to settle everything down. And we'll add the last of it. And I love these spatulas. They make it so easy to get as much lotion as possible out of your, your measuring cup and into your container. So cleanup is much easier. There you go. Let's give it a little test. Lovely. Pop our lid on there. And you're done. You just made oat milk dream cream. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and check the description box below for the full written recipe and links to everything I used in this video. See you next time.